Hey, good evening. Thank you for joining us on the Scabbard tonight. Um, so uh, it's an early game. Uh, Buffalo is playing Columbus tonight. Uh, we're going to go through the uh, World Juniors uh, just to update on what's going on there um, with our prospects. And then we'll get into the meat of the show with the uh, review of the Bruins game, the brutal Bruins game, and the uh, preview of tonight's game against the Columbus Blue Jackets. I'm very fortunate in that I don't get to watch this game. Um, I live in West Virginia, so um, my closest team actually is the Capitals, but uh, Pittsburgh also claims this area as their territory, and they black out people from watching Columbus games, which makes no sense, but I mean, if I wanted to watch a Pittsburgh game, I watch a Pittsburgh game. I, I don't get it why in twenty almost twenty twenty four that we're still doing uh, blackouts. So um, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Hopefully, the uh, next time we start doing TV contracts, that they'll end that practice because it's kind of a pain in the ass. Um, remember, if you have questions, comments, uh, please put them in the chat, and I'll be happy to address them during the show, and we'll get the chat live pop up here so uh again feel free to drop a chat and uh it'll show up here and i'll address it during the show so all right uh world junior hockey championship so far the uh, slovaks continue to impress in pool b uh while the swedes will win pool a uh after shutting out canada yesterday in an entertaining game i i, I thought the canadians struggled like they they just a lot of times it looked like the the Buffalo Sabres, like the, especially their power play. Like they, they really didn't generate much in the way of offense on their on their power play, um, and just didn't look all that together. Um, maybe they'll get it together by the medal round, but if they play like that in the medal rounds, it might get past a round or two. But 
you know, it's not unheard of that a team gets upset in that quarterfinal matchup. So, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with, with the Canadians, but the Swedes were full value for the victory yesterday. Um, it probably should have been more. The goaltender for the Canadians were so did made some spectacular saves. Um, but, uh, Noah Oslin, great, uh, drive goal on the, uh, uh, for the second goal of the game and, um, you know, picked up the rebound and, and popped it in there, um, to give the, the Swedes a little breathing room and, and, you know, allowed them to play probably a little looser than, you know, if it had been a one goal game the, the entire time. So, um, you know, it was a very important goal for the Swedes. Uh, let's talk about, uh, the score since we last convened in the last episode. So on day three, the United States, uh, smacked around Switzerland three to nothing. Uh, and the Swedes took down Germany five to nothing. Um, believe Oslin had an assist in that game. Um, uh, uh, we'll talk about, uh, Wahlberg it hasn't scored since the, uh, the first game, but, uh, is playing well. I I've liked his game so far. Uh, day four. Slovakia beat uh, Norway 8 to 4. Finland finally got in the win column against Latvia. Uh the US took down the Czechs in a shootout. Um Juraj Kulik had a nice uh snipe during the shootout uh but uh could not score a second time in the shootout and the Czechs fell to the Americans 4 to 3. Um and then the Swedes as I mentioned beat Canada 2 to nothing. Um on goal uh, on a goal from La Karamaki and uh Noah Osland. And then um day five scores they I think they're still playing. Let me just check right quick. Nope, final score. Uh the Germans fall to the Latvians six to two, but there's some good news in that game. Uh if you're watching any of the Sabres prospects. Um uh Switzerland also beat Norway. Norway is now in the relegation zone officially. Latvia has bought themselves a, perhaps a ticket out of the relegation zone uh, with this victory over Germany. Germany. I think Germany has to kind of really crap the bed against the Canadians, which is not entirely impossible. Um, but uh, the, the Canadians may be resting, uh, you know, may not push as hard in the final game of the pool play, knowing they're kind of locked into that second position. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll see what uh, happens. Uh, on the final day of the competition of the round robin competition tomorrow um pool a standings the swedes are three and oh the canadians are two oh and uh oh and one the germans are one oh oh and two the uh, so the the way that they do the standings the first number is the wins middle two are uh overtime win overtime loss and then finally the final number is loss so that's how the uh how they do the standings in uh IAHF. So um each each win is worth three points, an overtime win is worth two points, a overtime loss is one point, and a loss is zero points. So that's how they break down the uh points schedule for the uh IAHF tournaments. So um yeah Germany is one uh, has one win and two losses Finland one win and two losses Latvia finally got their first win. Um, so they kind of deal themselves a lifeline to get out of the relegation zone. Um, but they're one, uh, oh, oh, and three, they have no more games left in the round, Rob. And that was their final game that just wrapped up. Uh, and what a time for them to finally start scoring goals. They had been oh for the tournament, uh, going into, oh, um, no goals for 20 goals against. And, uh, so now they're at six goals for 22 goals against, uh, I think. I'm trying to remember if Germany is, if that game is based off of head to head competition or whether it is goal differential. Um, we'll decide it if they're tied on, on record. If it's head to head, Germany's already, uh, I mean, unless they shot Canada, they've already lost and will, uh, be in that relegation zone, <clears throat> which is sad because they had that big win against Finland earlier in the tournament. Um, but, and, and Finland may finish in the same, issue with with germany because they play sweden um sweden even though they've wrapped up the uh really wrapped up the pool uh because of their head-to-head -head win against canada the um the Finns could be yeah i think i think if finland loses to canada and sweden beats germany 
Uh, it's going to go to goal differential to determine who goes into the relegation zone. And I think Latvia is kind of in, in bad unless uh, Sweden and Canada just run up the score on Germany and Finland. So that's how that breaks down. In Pool B, uh, Slovakia, the surprise of the tournament so far, they're 3-0. and um, they are, uh, Their final game is against the United States, and that will be for the uh, for first place in the pool to get the optimal choice of getting that fourth uh, team in Pool A uh, in the quarterfinal matchup. And it, it may be a hard choice because, I mean, Finland can turn it on. They've got a talented squad. It's just they've underperformed so far. And if Finland is fourth place or Germany's fourth place, it could be a, you know, may not be the, the best thing in the world for Slovakia if they win the, the pool and get the first choice. May not be the best thing for the United States. The United States has proven time and time again that they do take some opponents a little less seriously than the uh, uh, the, than they should, like the, the Canadians or the Swedes. Uh, and they end up losing to, you know, Czechia, Slovakia, Finland, you know, those, those types of uh, countries, not to take Finland too lightly. But, um, you know, the, the, the Americans should take care of these teams, and they don't. So uh, let's take a look at all of our prospects so far. Anton Wahlberg uh, still sits at one goal after scoring the first goal in that Lafayette game. Uh, but I, I really, the times I've been able to watch Sweden, I've really liked his game. He does go to the front of the net. He does uh, pass the puck well. Uh, he doesn't look out of place on that top line with uh, Le Karamaki and uh, Noah Osland. And uh, so, you know, this year may not be his breakout scoring year, but next year could be a massive year for him uh, in the World Juniors. Noah Oslin has two goals and two assists in three games. Um, scored the second goal against the Canadians. For, scored um, against the Lafians. Um, he has uh, played really well in this tournament and um, looking forward to getting him over on North American ice next season, uh, playing for the Amherst. Um, you know, he's a smaller framed guy and, uh, we'll need to get a, you know, kind of like in that same idea of, um, Kiskoff, uh, on the Amherst right now, we just need to beef him up a little bit and, um, you know, get him acquainted with the North American game. And I won't be too worried about him translating that game into uh, a pro career. Sweden's remaining games, of course, is tomorrow against Finland, their rival, uh, going to be a big game for them. Um, Yes, Finland is only one and two in the tournament so far uh, and largely disappointing, but, you know, the Finns are going to bring it for this game. So uh, let's talk about Matt Savoy. He's had tough world junior so far. Uh, was originally credited with two assists in that Lafayette game, but had one later taken away. Um, he has just one assist in his plus two and three games. Uh, in that Sweden game, he fumbled a, uh, just a golden opportunity on a breakaway. Um, as he got close to the net and um, uh, he was out of practice today. Uh, the Canadians had an off day today, was out of practice. Um, so we're not sure if he's uh, tweaked something or, um, you know, just a maintenance day. I'm not really sure. And we'll, we'll see what happens with Matt Savoy going into the final game against the Germans. Um, but hopefully he can get his scoring going. Uh, really, this entire line is, has kind of struggled in this tournament. Um, and, uh, you know, part of the reason why the Canadians are sitting behind the Swedes in this thing, uh, for Canada, Scott Ratzlaff still has not dressed in any, any of Canada's games. Um, uh, really this is the focus focus for him should be on for, uh, next season's, uh, world junior championships that are in Canada in Ottawa. So, um, it'll be a big stage for him. Um, and, uh, you know, there's been illness going through the World Juniors camps, um, so I'm wondering, you know, maybe he does get to dress at some point, but um, now that we've gotten into the medal rounds, um, you know, I don't know that we'll see him at all uh, unless there is some kind of injury or illness that needs him to dress. Canada's remaining games, as we mentioned earlier, is Germany tomorrow. Um and uh, again, we'll see if uh, Matt Savoy uh, is playing and if he gets a chance to uh, uh, open his scoring account in um, in Sweden. So, your Kulik 
has three goals and two assists in three games and is a plus one so far. Added a shootout goal uh, versus the United States, but did miss on a later shot that um, uh, would have given him a chance to win that game. Uh, so Czechia fall, fell four to three to the United, the, uh, the Americans. Um, Kulik had a hat trick um, against the what the, the Norwegians, and uh, so you know has had a pretty good tournament so far. Um, uh, you know, Czechia has has disappointed in the fact that it it lost really bad to Slovakia earlier in the the, the tournament. Um, so we'll see what how they do tomorrow. Uh, I forgot to take take the uh, U.S. game off. So that the only remaining game for the Swiss uh, for them are the Swiss. Um, Swiss are riding high after winning today, and uh, so they shouldn't take them lightly. Uh, you don't want to be the fourth place team in this pool and then having to play Sweden in the next in the uh, quarterfinal round. That would be a, a bad thing. So they need to bring their a game, a game against the Swiss tomorrow uh, to move on uh, in that third position in the pool. Let's see. Our uh, next player is Maxime Streback. He has been the star of this tournament for the Sabres. Uh, from a Sabres perspective, he's the top scoring defenseman in this tournament with one goal and five assists. Um, had three assists in the win over Norway, their last game, and uh, is a pl- also a plus five uh, for the su- really surprising Slovakians who have really run uh, out with this group. Um, they do have the tough game against the United States on uh, tomorrow that uh, will decide who wins this group. They just really... Um, I, th- I believe all they need is an OT loss. Um, if they get it to OT, I, you know, I think they, they win the group. But um, we'll, we'll see. Well, I'm probably we'll go down to, to goal differential in this group. But Slovakia has played really well, and part of that has been Maxim Strebach for sure as a top-pairing defenseman for the Slovaks. Um the, a team that's playing without, you know, Uri Slavkovsky and some other uh, guys that would really help this team uh, in go deeper in the tournament. And final prospect to talk about is Nor- Norwin Pinoka. Uh, he's a defenseman on the now the second pairing for the Germans, um, or at least skating with the second line. Um, he had a goal in an otherwise forgettable game for the Germans uh, who lost today 6-2. to two. Um, then it was the final goal of the game. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, it's, it's good to see a young player like Pinoka put in a, put in a puck and, uh, uh, get on the score sheet. It's good to see. And, um, you know, not only did Pinoka get the goal, but in a game where they fell behind six to one, he was skating even uh, as a defenseman. So, um, you know, uh, he was playing well and was rewarded with a goal and that's good to see. And then of course, Germany's final game is against the Canadians. And then, uh, tomorrow we'll talk about, well, how my predictions look, looked, uh, from the beginning of the tournament, see where, um, where I was right, where I was wrong and, uh, uh, figure out, uh, what the quarterfinals will look at, look like tomorrow. So when we do our show for the Ottawa senators game, all right, let's get to, uh, the, Bruins game, look, there was a decent opening couple minutes of this game. Um, you know, they, they had some good pressure. They had some good puck possession. Um, and then it became the the comedy of errors. First, the the just absolute defensive lap, laps on the uh, first goal, um, you know, not following the, the uh, second man in. And, uh, you know, Lorai having just an absolute wide open shot on Devin Levi. Second goal, same thing. But the, the, after that, it really became the comedy of errors when it came to our special teams. They were very special in that game. Um, the, the power play was inept, 0 for 6. The penalty kill, our, our stat of the night, power play was 0 for 6. And the penalty kill was uh, 1 of 4. Uh, Bruins were three of four on the man advantage. And if you look at the final score, that is the difference in the game is that we couldn't score on the power play. We couldn't score in a, a Turkish prison with a fistful of pardons uh, when it comes to our power play. And that's just. 
and and you see the interviews with Don Granado, and he just I, I I don't know that he has an any clue. I mean, he seemed to this week kind of blame the fact that they haven't had practice, but that's a, you know that's a NHL wide thing. Like the uh, you know the the Sabers aren't special in that they could never practice. It was that you know they haven't addressed it enough in their practices to be able to set it up, and it's the same thing over and over again. It's pass, pass, pass on the outside, never challenging the middle of the ice, never getting pucks through. And whenever they actually did get a chance in the power play, they missed the damn net. Like these are all fixable things. And there, there's something to be said that, you know, for uh, taking a shot and putting it low, getting on the pads, hopefully getting rebounds, getting, getting to the, paying the price and getting to the net to uh, get those rebounds and put them home. Um, we're just not seeing enough of it. And uh, so the the power play was awful. The penalty kill is awful. And we saw the end of Tyson Jost. Um, uh, good on Tyson Jost for going down, accepting his demotion down to Rochester and going out and scoring a goal and getting an assist last night. Um, that's the way you want somebody to respond. I just don't know that if, Joe's plays really well at the AHL level that, you know, we, we bring him back through waivers. He's on re-entry waivers and, uh, I think he'll probably get picked up. So, um, so which probably means we won't see Joe's, uh, they won't bring Joe's back up through the, the waiver system. Plus the, the roster is just such a hot mess right now. So, um, in the last few days, we've seen Tyson Joe sent down. Uh, we still have three goalies. Uh, decision has not been made on that. Um, last I saw, I don't know that Zemgus Gergensen is going to play tonight. I don't know that he's been pulled off of IR just yet. Um, I'm sure the Players Association has something to say about having a guy sit on IR for a couple more days, even though they're not injured. Um, I know that Kevin Adams is trying to move something to be able to free up some space on his roster without sending him through through waivers. Um, he he sent Ryan Johnson down for five hours and called them back up. Um, there's just, uh, I think, I think Kevin Adams is just going to have to bite the bullet on this one. If we send down Eric Comrie and he gets claimed, okay, that kind of sucks, but we get free money, free some money up off of, of the, uh, salary cap. Uh, it sucks that we lose an asset for for free, but again, look at the, look at it from the perspective of we free up money on the salary cap, free up another year of money on the salary cap as well, because I think he's contracted through the end of next season. So uh, it's not a horrible thing uh, for us to consider. Um, yeah, you want to get uh, a prospect or a, a you know a pick or or something like a bag of pucks, a hot ham sandwich. I don't know, but. If not, if it's not there, and you're hamstringing your team, um, and keeping players off the ice that should be on the ice, then yeah, you need to need to need to bite the bullet on this one. Losing Eric Comrie for nothing is not going to set this uh, organization back any. So, um, oh, we did the stat of the night. Uh, let's talk about the Columbus Blue Jackets game preview. Uh, so the Columbus Blue Jackets are 12, 18, and seven. Uh, they are eighth in the Metro. However, they only one point, one standings point behind Buffalo. Um, they win tonight in, uh, you know, in regulation. Buffalo is behind Columbus, which if you said that at the beginning of the season, you would think, oh, Columbus is having a great season. No, they suck. And they, they play well against the Toronto Maple Leafs, played well against the Buffalo Sabres in the first game. Um, but yeah, I, I hope you're uh, taking the over tonight. I mean, it's, it's a high one. Um, and we'll get to that when we talk about the DraftKings uh, stuff. But uh, yeah, they're, they're one standings point behind Buffalo. Marchenko, who got the hat trick against the Buffalo Sabres last time he played, remember a 9-4 lost, lost that felt like rock bottom, but it, we seem to be keeping on digging. Um, Zach Wawrinski leads an assist, although we benefit from the fact that Wawrinski is injured. Um, Johnny Goudreau leads in points with 25. Um, but they've used four goalies this season, and they're going to use uh, Danil Tarasov, who we scored 
a minute and a half into the game uh, and then did not test the rest of the night. Um, well, actually, we did to test him a couple of times and, and we did end up with four goals. But um, by that point, it was already over. Um, we, we just did not keep up the pressure on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, let's see the, uh, protected forward lines for the Columbus Blue Jackets tonight. Johnny Gaudreau, Adam Fantilli, Adam, Dan- or, uh, John Danforth. Um, anyway, uh, Chinnikov, Bronkov, and Murchenko, that, uh, Russian second line, uh, young line of Cole Sillinger with Johnson, Kent Johnson, and, uh, Oliver Bemstrom, uh, on the third line, uh, Tessier, Gauntz, and Roslovic on the fourth line. Uh, there's some good scoring uh, ability on that fourth line, so we need to watch out for that one. Uh, for our defense pairings of the Columbus Blue Jackets, um, Damon Severson with uh, Juracek, Provorov with Peak, Bean with Good Branson. Um, yeah, it, uh, it not as deadly without uh, Zach Rowinski, but. Um, and Adam Boquist and and players like that, um, but uh, again they dropped six goals on Toronto last night. Yeah, granted we dra- dropped nine on Toronto, but um, they've dropped six goals on Toronto twice this season. So uh, the goalies tonight. Um, it really, originally they had uh, Mers Lincolns and Martin. Um, Martin played last night and did not play well early in that Toronto game. Was replaced by Mers Lincolns. Mers Lincolns is sick. Uh, did not make the trip, so uh, it is Daniel Daniel Tarasov uh, in net with Martin backing up. The uh, Blue Jacket scratches Blankenberg on IR, Boquist on IR, Line A on IR, Jenner on IR. There's a lot of talented players on IR for the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. Line A, Jenner, Wierenski, all out uh, long term. Uh, Sean Gorelli just got put on IR as well. So he won't be playing tonight either. So um, Columbus played last night and they're traveling today. Sabres been off a couple days. Sabres should be fresh for this game. Um, they should beat this team. Uh, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if we lay another egg. I'm just that down on this team. Uh Sabres projected forward lines, uh, not too much of a surprise here. Skinner, Thompson, Tuck, Paterka, Cousins, Quinn, Greenway, Middlestat, Benson. I didn't really know if Gergensen was going to get into the lineup, but I haven't seen him being taken off IR officially. So it uh, looks like Olsen, Krebs, and Ocposo. Um, but they may be able to take him off before the uh, game here so that uh, they can get him on. But they would have had to have put somebody through waivers at 2 o'clock, and I have not heard if they've done that. Sabres defensive pairings, Darlene Samuelson, which uh, honestly re- needs to be broken up at some point. Um, I- I'm just not feeling that that pairing. Uh, Owen Power with Ryan Johnson, Eric Johnson, and Connor Clifton on the third pair. Uh, goalies the last couple of days have been showing Lukanen in net, so it uh, looks like Uko Pekka Lukanen will be starting for the goal for the Sabres. Uh, scratches at this point. Yoki, how are you healthy? Robinson healthy, Gergensen's or Olufsen. Uh, again, if they're able to move somebody, I, I don't know. I don't know that they have or not. Um, tonight's odds for DraftKings, I haven't updated that yet, but uh, Buffalo is a goal and a half favorite, and the over under is seven. So they, you know, going off of one uh, Columbus scoring a ton of goals, going off that previous game where they've had 13 goals on the board, um, and, you know, uh, the, Sabres and the Blue Jackets have had some barn burners over the last few years. Um, not surprised that the over-under is above that 6.5, which has kind of been kind of where Buffalo is, has settled most of the season. Uh, the key, three keys to the game is only one. Stop the slide. Um, play, like you're, play like you're the better team. Uh, you know, On paper, they are supposed to be the better team. Uh, Columbus has got some good, talented players. Um, but they've also got a ton of talented players out injured right now, and they don't have really good goaltending. Tarasov wasn't that great in the game against Buffalo. Just the fact that Buffalo scored one goal, took their foot off the gas, and allowed Columbus to score seven goals in a row, 
before even threatening Tarasov again. And, uh, you know, you if you get out to the hot start, it's okay if you blow out a team. Uh, don't, don't hold, you know, don't hold yourself back. There's just no sense in doing that. Uh, let's see on the farm. Amherst are 13, 12, two and one. They've been sliding a little bit. Uh, they've dropped a five, fifth in the AHL North. They lost to Hershey, which is not no shame. I mean, Hershey is like, they're the top team in the AHL right now. Uh, only lost six times this season, but, um, uh, yeah, they lost three, four to two. Um, Tyson Jost had a goal and an assist. I believe Weisbach had a goal and an assist as well. Um, but uh, good on Tyson Jost to go down and play well uh, as he gets into the AHL. Who knows if there's injuries and all that kinds of stuff that we'd see Tyson Jost back. I just, I'm not sure that we will. Uh, for the Jacksonville Icemen, they are 15, 10, and 3. They're third in the ECHL uh, Conference South. They're kind of, they've been there for a while, uh, whether they win or lose. The teams ahead of them have been pretty hot. The um, the Greenville Swamp Rabbits and the um, South Carolina Stingrays. So um, having trouble with the state of South Carolina overall. But uh, the, let's see, they beat the India uh, Indianapolis or Indy Fire uh, or Indy Fuel, I believe is the, the team name. Uh, three to two in overtime in their last game, and tonight they take on the Cincinnati uh, Cyclones, who the, the, used to be the Sabers ECHL affiliate. Uh, on Sunday, uh, I believe that wraps up their road trip into the at least western part of the Eastern Conference um, uh, for now, at least. The week ahead for the Sabers, Ottawa is in town to, or actually we're in Ottawa tomorrow. Uh, the game is at six o'clock. The, uh, then we're off for a few days until the 4th of January, uh, where we take on the Canadians uh, in Montreal and then at Pittsburgh next Saturday. Um, I mentioned that it is Saturday, and uh, the Sabres have not won since uh, playing the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, a few Saturdays, at, uh, like Saturday, November 4th. So Saturday has not been a kind day for the Buffalo Sabres. We've gotten blown out a few times on Saturday. Uh, Pittsburgh beat us four nothing. New Jersey beat us six to two, or seven to two. Um, so, would like to see the Sabers come out and secure victory on a Saturday uh, to break that streak. Uh, next episode, of course, is tomorrow, five o'clock, with a six p.m. puck drop in Ottawa. Um, kind of a tucks and pucks night, at least in the Ottawa uh, side of things, and. Um, We'll see if the uh, Sabres can uh, take on the uh, Ottawa Senators, who are still floundering, uh, even despite the uh, coaching change with Jacques Martin. Um, can can the Sabres keep themselves ahead of Ottawa? This really, uh, if they lose tonight, there, there's only one team that can pass us in the Eastern Conference, and that is the Ottawa Senators. Um, so, yeah, it's become that brutal of a season. Anyway, uh, that is the show tonight. I appreciate everybody watching, uh, whether you're watching us on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. Uh, we, we appreciate you. Give us a like, a share, a subscribe. Uh, hit a bell icon to get reminded of when we go live. Um, and uh, we appreciate you. And we will talk to you all tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m. And let's go, Buffalo. Hopefully we can end the uh, bad run here. So. Have a good one, everybody.